Okay, in this video, we are going to look at prototyping with our Arduino Nano. Now, I'm not going to restrict it just to the Arduino Nano. It could be an ARM microcontroller, like on the blue pill, or uh, on the one bitsy. So it could be any microcontroller module. The first thing we do, we take our module, in this case our Arduino Nano, we mount it on a breadboard, which has an isolation channel through the center. We could straddle ICs, and we could put our Arduino Nano on the board. And we could do our debugging, our troubleshooting, our tweaking, our rewiring, until we get the circuit running the way we want to. Then we could apply it to a, a, a Vero board, a proto board, like this one here. So you solder all your components on, and you use a boring tool to make isolation channels. And you put all your parts in the top, and you solder them all on. Now there's another proto board, which is similar to the breadboard. It, it, it mimics it. So you can take your circuit right off your breadboard and apply it to this uh, to this proto board, like this one here. So you solder it all you solder it all on, and that will complete your project. Now you have to put it into an enclosure. So we need an enclosure, and uh, one of the enclosures could be a plastic enclosure like this one here. Uh, I mounted uh, uh, my Arduino project into this plastic module, and you can see there's a vector board, a Vero board in here. And it has an isolation channel down the center, and you can mount that right inside the enclosure. I have an HC06 Bluetooth module in here, that's why I use a plastic enclosure, but you could get metal enclosures. Now this is just a Vero board, you can see everything's soldered on the bottom, and there's your isolation channel. So it makes a nice little, nice little uh, project, mounting it in, uh, in, into a plastic enclosure for a one-off. So this could be a project for a friend or a customer, where you can mount in here. And, and, and away you go. Okay, I have my controller up and running a simple program. I'm just flashing two LEDs back and forth. Now if I power down the unit and power it back up, it automatically goes into its main program. That's my demo program, the, the lights flashing back and forth. So it's auto boot into the main program. But if you see, if you notice on the side of the box, there's a button. So if I power it down, then hold the button in, and power it up, it goes into a diagnostic mode. You notice that the main program isn't running, the LEDs aren't flashing, but you can see my HC06 Bluetooth module is flashing ready to be paired. So now I can get access to my controller through my smartphone and I can go into diagnostic mode. Okay, I powered up my controller in diagnostic mode and I've paired it to my smartphone. And I have an app running where I can control all the I.O. on my controller board through Bluetooth, so I can turn the LEDs on and off, I can toggle them, if I hold it, which will toggle automatically, I go to LED number two, on and off, or toggle, or all, both on and off, and both toggle. So it's very versatile, when we have control through Bluetooth. Now when I go to mount my control box, I usually use a DIN rail. So if I mount this on a DIN rail, it's easy to snap off, and I can bring it to my bench, like you see here, and I could actually power up the whole system through the USB port on Arduino Nano. I don't need my external power supply. So it just makes it more handy if you mount the box on a DIN rail, and it's easy to, t to put on and off of the machine that, that it's, it's going into. So here's another box that has a DIN rail mount, and there's our DIN rail. So basically it just snaps in like that. And you just mount that, these two slots, you can mount it anywhere you want, you can mount it down. And to take it off, just release it from the DIN rail, and you can take it off, put it on your bench, and then you can work on it. Okay, you could also get metal enclosures for your project, like this one here. Now this is an extruded aluminum enclosure with end caps, and they all come in different sizes. So what I did, I cut a piece of Vero board, the correct width, to fit into the slots on this enclosure, and I designed a PC board on the bottom that also fits into the, into the slots. So I slide both boards in, put the end caps on, put the four screws on, and that's my completed project. Now if you have a single board computer, similar to this, and you can't find an enclosure where it fits, you can mount it on a piece of aluminum plate with the right dimension so it fits into a, uh, an enclosure. 
So here's an enclosure with a plate with the right width. It fits into the slots. So you mount your board on here, slide it in, that's your completed project. Now also you can build your own shields using your own custom PC board. You go online, you can build your own PC board. It's pretty cheap. You go online and you can mount it on there and then mount this whole the shield and the board into a, an extruded enclosure. Of course you need a little bit bigger one like this one here. It's a little bit uh, higher. And you'll slide in there and that will complete your project. Okay, you've designed a circuit and built it on your breadboard and then you built a prototype and got it up and running properly. Now there's lots of interest in your device so you want to build a few. You want to go into production. So get yourself an off-the-shelf enclosure like this one. It's an extruded aluminum enclosure and design your PC board so it fits into the slots of this enclosure. Now the end caps, you can get laser cut by the company who makes the enclosure. You can see here, there's the holes for matching the DB9 connector, there's a reset switch, your, your power connector and a couple other connectors. Now your board just slides out, slides out of the enclosure, and there's the heart of the board. It's a rabbit board made by Rabbit Semiconductor. And the roots go back into uh, the Z80 days, the Zilog days. And the company that's making these is called Digi. They still make it rabbit boards. So you mount all your components on the board. And those are all your support ICs. And there's some connectors in the back. So it's very clean. There's no wires. It's a very clean PC board. So all you have to do is just slide it in into the enclosure, put the end caps on, and you're ready for delivery. Okay, I'm on the Hammond Manufacturing website. And they make extruded aluminum enclosures and you can see there's lots of sizes available also colors and you can get the end caps in either aluminum or plastic and they also make waterproof enclosures NEMA 4 enclosures now all these enclosures are all off the shelf so they're in stock so they're readily available okay this is where it all starts dreaming up a circuit building it on the breadboard writing some code, getting it up and running, debugging it, building a prototype until you get your final project. Now that's a lot of work, a lot of work involved, but you never know, you might start your own business.